Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful Think Tech Hawaii TV studio in the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. Today's special guest is Alex Kawakami. Alex is an extremely talented musician who is part of the very successful Manoa DNA band and also has a thriving solo career. And today, we are going beyond the music. Hey, Alex. How's it going? <laughs> Man, I haven't, I, I've known this guy for 25, 25 years now. It, probably. It's good to see you in a different setting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I enjoyed training you in tennis in private know, group lessons. I, I wasn't the easiest <laughs> student, but, you know, he did a good job. You had a great forehand. I did. I don't know about nowadays. <laughs> My shoulder's a little sore. But <laughs> now, I know that you went to Punahou, but yes. tell me about how your Punahou school experience was. Well, it was amazing. You know, I went from kindergarten all the way through uh, my senior year, and um, of course, Punahou gives you so many opportunities, the experience, the people you meet, you know, the coaches, the teachers. Um, and although at the time I really appreciated everything about it, looking back now, past high school and, you know, going into college and going into the real world, I really appreciated what I learned uh, from all my teachers and coaches and just going through that culture was a tremendous experience for me. And then what college did you end up going to, Alex? Uh, I ended up going to University of Colorado at Boulder for one year. Um, it was very cold. Uh, I, I had a little trouble uh, academics-wise, <laughs> but um, I decided to come home uh, back to the University of Hawaii because I, there was a few music uh, opportunities here that I wanted to pursue, and um, I was having trouble getting into some of the music stuff up there, so I just wanted to come back. Um, mostly for music, actually. So, how talking about music, how did you first get interested in music? Well, music, from as far as I can remember, um, I don't know if I remember this or it's because my dad has told this story a lot, is uh, <laughs> when I was around two years old, I had a, a toy ukulele, and my dad, of course, played music through his whole life as well. And uh, he had a band, and they would be playing multiple times a week, so I would watch them play, I would, be at the rehearsals, and I would have my ukulele and just, you know, not playing anything. <laughs> but from then on, I can remember it was my passion, you know, through two, two years old until now. Um, ukulele, singing, writing, guitar, everything. And you have an amazing family. I know your mom and dad very well, mm -hmm. and your brother Nick. Can you tell everybody about your family? Yeah. Um, my, my mom and dad, my grandparents, they're amazing people. Um, they work hard, but they have good hearts. You know, that's, that's the biggest thing I took from growing up and um, watching my parents. Um, and my brother and I, he's three years older, but, you know, everybody, they have stories about their siblings, especially brothers, you know, fighting and getting into scuffles and yelling at each other and getting into trouble. But for, for me and my brother, we were really close, uh, you know, growing up and even now we're very close. So, and I think that just is a testament to how my, my parents raised me. Yeah, and your family has been growing in recent years. Yes, you know, I got married in 2015, uh, and my brother got married last year, so in, in that case, we, my parents doubled their kids, yeah. so now they have two daughters. <laughs> and uh, of course, about four months ago, uh, our family grew more, and uh, Sarah, my wife, and I had our first grandson, uh, son, and yep. my parents have their first grandson. So it's been a wild few years, man, for the Kawakami family. <laughs> well, your son, Alika, is like mm -hmm. the cutest, cutest he little is. baby. Yeah. yeah, he's, you know, they, so a funny story is uh, through the pregnancy, everybody said the, the mom becomes a mom when she becomes pregnant. And I understood that, and that happened completely for Sarah. She became a mom immediately. They say, you become a dad when you first hold your kid. And I said, I can't wait for that moment. And so in the hospital, I was like, you know, ready. I'm ready, from, I'm ready to become a dad. And I held my kid, and I looked at him, and I'm like, 
Well, he's he's a, a kind of a weird color. Uh, he <laughs> kind of looks like an alien. And my wife is asking me, well, who, who does he look like? I'm like, I, I don't know right now. But <laughs> so that moment, I was kind of like, well, well. He's my son. That's good. But you know, right after that, when we we're holding him and feeding him and changing him, it was it changed my life completely. It was it's amazing. So far, four and a half months into it, it's been amazing. Well, I'm very proud and happy for you, Thank Alex. Thank you. Thank you. Now let let's talk about Manoa DNA. Yeah. Okay. You sure. guys are hugely popular, hugely successful. How did it all begin? Well, it started. Uh, you know, naturally, as a family, we played music together, uh, whether it's at barbecues or family events. Um, people would ask us to play. So we would play, and then we had no rehearsal, just jam session. And uh, when I moved back from Colorado, I was actually moving back to pursue a solo career because uh, I was playing, practicing a lot in Colorado, and I wanted to come home and play music. And um, the summer I came back, one of my dad's friends opened a restaurant called E&O Trading Company in Ward. And he had asked my dad, hey, do you and your sons want to play every week? And so my dad asked us, and you know, of course, a, an 18 year old, 19 year old, I was like, oh, yeah, <laughs> you know, a weekly gig, you gotta usually work for that, but all right, let's do it. And um, so my dad put us through boot camp, literally music boot camp. It was about a month or two before our first time playing there. And he would put us through hours every day of rehearsing, putting together a song list, because he told us, if we're gonna do this, we're going to do it right. We're not going to have a backyard jam session. We're going to have songs that we learn and rehearse. And that was the beginning of Manoa DNA. We didn't have a band name. Really? Was, yeah. We, when we got the gig, we had to think about, oh, what are we going to be, the, the Kawakami Ohana, the, you know, <laughs> the Kawakami boys, what is it? And um, my mom threw out the name Manoa DNA. And it's because we grew up in Manoa Valley. Um, my grandparents were uh, in Manoa Valley, too. so we from my dad's uh, young age also. And uh, DNA, although we're all family, so it works, it also set stands for dad, because it, the band is my dad and my brother Nick. So dad, Nick, and Alex. And to this day, my mom takes credit for everything <laughs> we do, because if she wasn't there, we wouldn't have the name Manoa DNA. <laughs> of course, your mom, Carla, she's like the glue that keeps all of you guys together. Totally. And she takes also credit for uh, my brother and my vocal talents, because yeah. she said, when we were born, we took all of her talents. That's why she can't sing anymore. <laughs> I don't know if she could sing before, but that's her story. <laughs> now, you guys are hugely, obviously, popular in Hawaii, mm -hmm. but also big time in Japan. Why, why are you guys so popular in Japan? You know, that was another thing. Just like the e &O Trading Company gig, um, we're very fortunate to have an opportunity to play in Japan. And, you know, from the beginning, we we're always about if there's an opportunity, you, you take, you, you grasp it, and you have to make the best of it. And we are fortunate to go up with uh, Hawaii Tourism Japan in 2016, uh, which led to a bunch of more performances with them. And what I think people gravitated to was uh, not only our music, but because we're a family and we make it a point to uh, really connect with the people, our fans there. And from the beginning, um, you know, after our performances, even to this day, we go out after and, and hang with the fans in the clubs or the, the, wherever we're playing. And we have drinks with them. We cheers them. Nice. They, they know that about us. So they know it's comfortable for them to come up to us and to talk with us, to give us gifts. And uh, it's gotten to a point, a, a funny story is that uh, in 2014, I think it was, we, we decided to get a group of people, of our friends in Hawaii, to come on tour with us okay. in Japan. It was about, I think it was about 18 of us. And we went through Tokyo, and we ended up, uh, the end of it was in Sapporo. And what we did there was, it was in a ballroom, and so there was tables of about 10, and we, we placed one per, all of our friends from Hawaii at each table, only one, surrounded by nine other Japanese fans. Our friends did not speak Japanese. They, the Japanese people, spoke broken English. Okay. So it was a little awkward in the beginning, but once we started playing music, the drinks started flowing, the food started coming in. By the end of the performance, uh, it was a huge party and everybody was so happy because it wasn't about the different cultures but they came together and I, to me it was the music that brought everybody together and afterwards we were in one of our friends rooms drinking and partying after at about 11 or 12 
And slowly we saw some of the Japanese fans peek their head in because they could hear us. And by the end of the night, we had everybody together again in this small hotel room, just drinking, partying. And I think that's, that's what people connect to with us. And it's so much fun for us as well. And so we're so fortunate to have that following in Japan. And Alex, you perform a lot with Henry Capono. I mean, yeah. he's a living local legend here. He is. How yeah. did you first connect with him? Well, back、uh, in the 90s, my dad used to play with Cecilio and then used to play with Cecilio and Capono、yeah. uh, when they did their back in the day concerts. So I knew him a little bit.、Uh, I knew of him and I had met him a few times. I wouldn't say he was a friend. Uh, but in,、uh, I moved to Los Angeles in 2014 to pursue music. And、uh, it was in 2016 that、uh, I was starting, I was writing music, I was pitching music to TV shows, I was trying to record an album, I was producing music. And it was at a point where I was hitting a lot of walls, and there was a lot of no's and a lot of failures, which I had expected. I didn't expect that many. <laughs> and so, and I'm always about the attitude if someone doesn't like it or it's, you, you fail, then you just get back up and do it better. Otherwise, it's a wasted opportunity. But it was at a point where I was, I was ready to say, I'm, I'm going to do something else because I cannot handle this anymore.、Um, I want to just move home. I want to work somewhere and just live a simple life. And、uh, it was around that exact time that Henry's manager, his wife,、uh, contacted me. and Said, hey, Henry's going to be in San Luis,、uh, San Luis Obispo. Do you want to,、uh, do you want to come and, and play? And I said, sure, when? He said, Wednesday. And it was a Monday. <laughs> and I was like,、uh, okay. He said, oh, I said, yeah, I'll definitely open you o k n when w people are coming in. I'll play. He said, oh, no, we already have an opening band. So do you want to just jump up with him on stage during his concert? And I said, Okay,、uh, why not? I said, what, what song do you want to sing? And I blurted out Sunflower because I love that song. And she, she said, okay. And Henry said, yep, okay, we'll practice it at Soundcheck. I had never played Sunflower before in my whole life. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know why I said it, but it came out. And I went down there, I practiced it, went down there, we soundchecked. And immediately when we soundchecked, we knew something special was there. Both of us did, everybody who was there for soundcheck. Knew something was special. And then when we per performed it, there was a silence. So I'm getting chicken skin right、oh. now. There was a silence over the room that was just a special moment that changed my music career forever. And it was just by chance, it was all about seizing that opportunity.、Um, and from then on, that opened the door to the Songs of CNK tour, the album. That was the whole premise、uh, moving forward for them as well. And so, For me and Henry to connect there, I don't know what it was. It was just something happened. And from then on, it, it literally changed my path in life in that moment. It's magical. It was crazy.、Yeah. So, how, Alex, how, how has he helped you personally since then? Well, personally, he's, he's showed me what it means to be a true professional.、Um, the, with ev any career, You know, you're going to meet people who are, are sharks, you know, especially in LA. I met a lot of those kind of people. But、um, you don't expect to meet someone like Henry, who's a legend here, who can act however he wants and no one will say anything. You don't expect him to be so giving and so generous and so open about、uh, helping someone. And he took me under his wing. He, he Brought me to different gigs he did, introduced me to、uh, some of his clients, bring, brings me to the Outer Islands for concerts, and he's really helping me pave that path. And he's using his connections to do it, which is unbelievable to, to me. It's, I'm, I tell everybody, I'm just waiting for him to you know, yell at me or, <laughs> or go behind my back. Because I'm like, this is so weird. Like, why is he doing this? But he's never, that's just not his style. And his, him and his family and his whole team. Amazing. Amazing they're, people. They're a class act, and, and he's a classy guy. Completely, yeah. And Alex, I want to ask, I, I, I don't know about this,、mm -hmm. but have you ever screwed up on stage、yeah. before? Well, yes. You have? <laughs> yes. There are many stories of that. But、uh, actually, one of the funny stories is、uh, so it was earlier this year, and I was with Henry in the Songs of CNK. We were playing on Maui, and we had a sold out auditorium of a couple thousand people. And I always get nervous before I 
start the song Sailing, because that's their, one of their most famous songs, and the iconic part is the harmonica. Okay. And I, I do that part. Okay. <laughs> and that's the only part I get nervous for ever in playing music is that part. And that was right when we were uh, announcing that we were having a kid. And so before I left to go to Maui, my wife says, you're having a kid. Make him proud. You're, you know how to do the solo. You can play everything. Make him proud. Think of him when you're playing, and you'll be fine. So right before, I picked up my harmonica, and I thought in my head, Henry's telling his story. I thought in my head, you know, I, I'm the man. <laughs> I can do this. What am I worried about? I've played this 100 times. I'm having a kid. I better show him confidence. Yeah. It's like, I got this. Everybody's going to love it. Ready to go. Henry looks at me, gives me the nod. I'm like, I'm ready. I got this. I start the song, and I picked up the wrong key harmonica. <laughs> and so I start it, and he starts playing, and it's a train wreck. Oh, no. It's the last song of the concert. Oh, no. So I start it, and I just I start busting out laughing, and I, I stop, and I say, wait, 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 hold on. I totally screwed that up, everybody. And it was like the universe was like knocking me down, saying, yeah, you want to you get confident? Yeah, not good. Get down a little peg. And I started it, and what's funny about that is everybody, Henry, everybody was laughing. And I, was, I started laughing, like, what? what is going on here? And if you've seen the, the first Hawaiian Bank commercials that have been out, oh, yeah. uh, they feature uh, me working with Henry a lot. And I think at the end of the commercial, it shows us in that auditorium, it has a silhouette of me, but showing everybody else. And they're smiling <laughs> and nodding their head at me. And it's a really special moment. But really, they're laughing at me <laughs> because I messed up. And so it, it created such a good moment for everybody. And it worked out in the end. But it's one of those things that, you know, you, you can't get too cocky in what you're doing. <laughs> and I, I got knocked down a peg. And I'll remember that for the rest of my life. Well, Alex, that's funny. <laughs> I, I, I'm glad that you shared that. And Alex, we're going to take a quick break. Okay. But when we come back, we're going to continue going beyond the music. You got it. You are watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii with my special guest, Alex Kawakami. We will be back in 60 seconds. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. <music> Welcome back to Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My special guest today is Alex Kawakami, who is part of the very successful Manoa DNA band and also has a thriving solo career. And today we are going beyond the music. Alex, let's talk about that solo career that you have. Yeah. Um, do you write your own music? Yeah, uh, I've been writing music uh, since high school. Uh, I just started getting into it. Uh, I didn't really train or anything for it, but uh, over the years I've learned from a lot of people and uh, I've learned to how to write from my own experiences and emotions. I started, when I started, I didn't want to write from personal experience, but yeah, now I, I write all my music. I have writing partners and producing partners that I work with and um, we're coming up with some new stuff this year too, or this coming year. Yeah, and I love your, your new CD, Rise and Shine, mm -hmm. and I, I really like the songs Fire Knife, Home, yeah. I Won't Wait. Yeah. You know, I mean, tell me about that. Well, all those, so like I said, all of those are, are personal experiences. Fire Knife, actually, we, I wrote with my friend Eric Berdan in LA we wanted to write a beach party song. And so we wrote about a, a girl spinning like a fire knife to bring it all back to Hawaii. Uh -huh. um, Home is a very special song because of, you know, I, I travel a lot for music. And fortunately, I get to travel with my family and I get to travel with my wife a lot. And so although I'm away from home a lot, it, it never felt like I was away from home because I was always with the people I love. And that's why I wrote that song. And I Won't Wait was a, a personal experience, a friend. 
uh, who is in a relationship that we all knew shouldn't shouldn't be in that relationship and be strong and don't wait for you know that partner to come around. You're you're your own person. Yeah. Yeah. No, I and and you have two uh, solo CDs. Yes. Yeah. yeah. One one was done uh, in 2012. Okay. It was my first experience when I went to Japan, and then this one uh, was most recent one, Rise and Shine. And then, how can viewers contact you, Alex, if they want to um, hire you to perform at some function? The easiest way is uh, either my website, alexkawakami.com, um, even Instagram and Facebook, all at Alex Kawakami. Uh, I checked, but the team checks it all. So um, if you want to contact me, contact me. Great. Yeah. Alex, let's talk about your incredible Iolani Incorporated company. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I, I, first of all, I want to thank you yeah. and your parents because you, know, you guys sponsor me. Yeah, with my, and look at your shirt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we make it look good, right? <laughs> and you guys have incredible uh, styles. I mean, I, I love the variety. And mm -hmm. it's not just one style, but there's so many different types of yeah. clothing. I mean, how, how did it all begin? Well, the company started in 1953. My grandparents uh, founded the company the same year my dad was born. So they're, they're crazy. I don't know how they did that. But uh, from 1953 till now, we celebrated our 65th year this year. And, you know, we started with Aloha shirts because that's what was booming in the market at the time. Uh, we, we went over to more women stuff in the 70s, 80s. and. You know, now it's a, it's a good mix. And I think one of the, the, the reasons that has been successful and we'll, we've been able to survive for 65 years is because we've been able to adapt and we've changed. We we've, haven't been stuck in our ways. And that's, that's what's been uh, a theme from when I joined in 2016 is you know, not, we're not staying in one place. We're not forgetting what our history is about. But we're also moving forward and expanding based on the values that Iolani has. Yeah, and your parents, Lloyd and Carla, I mean, really doing a fantastic job running the business. And then yep. you and Sarah mm -hmm. are helping them as yeah. well. So what are the roles that you guys all play? Well, of course, my mom and dad are boss. Okay. That's, that's number one. I, they're, if they're watching, I haven't forgot that. But um, to their credit, you know, Sarah and I came on, and Sarah has been great in merchandising our stuff and uh, giving new ideas with our, our designer, Grace. Um, and really what I have to give my parents credit because they're open to change. And, you know, Iolani as a, a garment uh, manufacturer uh, has done it the same way for 65 years. We've, we've developed different styles, uh, prints, material. Um, but moving forward, the market's changed so much. And so there has to be a lot of change. You know, just social media is a huge change for us. And having our own retail store and how to promote it. And so us expanding into retail and also expanding in the Iolani Center, which is going to feature uh, music, arts. We have Purve Donut Stop, Snack Addicted Beef Jerky, Koloha Ukulele, all made in Hawaii. It takes the values that my grandparents had about supporting the culture here in Hawaii, supporting the creative arts in Hawaii, and we're bringing it back. You know, I think I think it's it's slowly been lost to people trying to always go overseas to make things, but. We have so much talent in Hawaii uh, for everything that uh, we, we feel like Iolani is moving in that direction. We have to bring it back. To, we're still all made in Hawaii, so we want to support everybody else who's creating good things here in Hawaii. That's what the Iolani Center is all about. Yeah, I totally agree with you. It's such a great feel there. And you know, you've achieved a lot of success in music, and you can see a successful company mm -hmm. in your you know, your grandparents and your parents' business mm -hmm. with Iolani. Yeah. How, how do you define success, Alex? Well, success, I think everybody has a different opinion at what success is. You know, some people think it's making a lot of money or winning awards or, you know, those are all uh, different ways of succeeding. But to me, and this is something I learned in L.A., was to me, success is in how you prepared for what you're doing. And if you've done everything possible leading up to whatever it is, a deadline or a project ending, You've done everything in your power, and you've done it to your best. Then, to me, it doesn't matter how it ends up, you know. And it, with tennis, with uh, music, with Iolani, it's how you prepare. So, like I was saying in the beginning, I was a tough student for him because <laughs> I hated practicing, and that's and I, it, that's how I was with growing up. I, I didn't like practicing, but he made it fun, so I always practice. And with music, it's the same way where I feel better about what I've done 
if I prepared for it. And so, to me, succeeding is is how hard you work towards it. Whether you succeed at it or not, that's that's a good. But if you feel good about it, to me, then I've succeeded. Yeah, enjoy the journey and, yeah. and try try stuff. Yeah. yeah. If you if you fail, you know, one of the songs on my album is called In Your Life. And it's a song literally about that, is you're going to fall and hit your head and get smacked in the face all the time, no matter how careful you are. So why not just go out, fall on your face, and experience it, and then learn from that, and take it into wherever else you want to go. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Yeah. And Alex, you know, every successful person, they experience challenges in their life. Well, what's been a big challenge or an obstacle that you had to overcome? Well, there's there's been a lot of obstacles, and um, you know one of the ones that I I really always go back to is uh, when I was in Los Angeles, and my wife was there with me, which was amazing. Uh, if I was alone, I don't know if I would have survived there. But one of the challenges was what I just said: is you take chances, and I'm you know I'm always positive. I'm I'm a happy person. I always try and be positive to everybody I talk to. Uh, even if I fail, and that's been my theme forever. And um, in LA, it was so difficult to keep that positivity alive. And I, I would be going to uh, TV uh, placement stations, uh, places where they want to place your songs on yeah. TV, movies. And I'd be so proud of what I did, and they would say, "No, it's not. It's not ready. You're not. You know, this isn't good enough for for us. Come back later." And it happened over and over again. And like I said, be, of course, I prepare and I would work at it, and I would be proud of it. After a point, though, it became too hard, and so that was the biggest challenge: was to push through that barrier. And part of it was having my wife, having a good support system, having my family, knowing that. They're there. That was one huge part of it, and the other part was just pushing through it and knowing that it's going to eventually get better. And that's that's what when Henry came into my life, and yeah. I'm a firm believer that you just keep going. But that was huge for me. It was it was difficult. It was the first time I really felt like quitting. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you didn't quit. <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> wow. So you were down in the dumps, and then Henry saved you. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I credit. A lot of what has been happening over the last two, three years to Henry and also my dad and my brother for sticking with music. Um, it's just it was at a point where I wanted to quit. I wanted to do something else because I couldn't handle it, and um, I ended up pushing through. And these guys came through. Great. Yeah. Now, Alex, before we wrap up, I want to know one more thing. Yes. What are you hoping to aspire to achieve in your future? Well, there's there's a lot happening. This this past year was a huge year for me. Um, you know, with music, Iolani, and family-wise, and one of the one of the things I I really want to achieve, and my, I think this really is because of my parents, is just to raise a good son, and to create an environment around him that is fun, um, it's helpful, it's encouraging, because that's what I had, and. Being a dad for four months, I can see how hard it's going to be to you don't because you don't know. I mean, I don't I don't know what he's going to be like. I don't know what I'm going to be like when he's older. Um, but you know, to to support him and to also balance having a son, having a family, as well as trying to develop more with Iolani and music, that balance is what I'm hoping to achieve. I have I'm terrible at it now. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's one day that I'll be like, yeah, I, I'm good at balancing my stuff. But now, no, I'm terrible. Yeah. I'm terrible at it, man. <laughs> so bad. Well, Alex, I'm I'm very proud of you. Thank and you. you know, you're a man of great character <laughs> and you're very likable. I want to thank you so thank much you. for no, taking you. time to be on Beyond the Lines today. Appreciate it. And I know all of Hawaii is proud of you. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Thank you, Alex. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit my website, rustykomori.com, and my book is available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all Costco stores in Hawaii. I hope that my book and TV show inspires you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.